forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give him, and give over to him, your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot, to be a place of honor for his family. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are His judgments, and how in unsearchable His ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been His counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that He may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him, are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen.
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. This, um, this gospel passage is, of course, very important and, and pivotal, pivot, pivotal one uh, in the life of the church and the life of faith. Um, but I think uh, it's, it's very, very important for us to focus on how our Lord and what the Lord asks um, and, and the way he goes about it. He, it, of course, evokes the response of faith on the part of uh, Simon Barjona, uh, who, in answer to the question, who do people say that the Son of Man is, and who do you say that I am? Um, 
And so this, this statement, it seems maybe impulsive, but he speaks first. He reveals what's in his mind and his heart. Um, and he makes his profession of faith to the Lord. And because of this, the Lord uh, reveals even more. And what he foreknew and what he would do, that he would name him Simon Peter, uh, rock, and upon this rock, who build his church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. And then giving him the keys of the kingdom, the binding and loosening. Um, so, uh, I think it is very worthwhile and important for us to consider these things. I mean, obviously, these are very important things in terms of the Lord's, you could say, his architecture for the church and the way he was structuring things and how he was uh, establishing means whereby his grace would be effective and at work in carrying out continuation of his mission on this earth. But in order for that to happen, and for, or in, in order for that to be sustained, there has to be the disposition of faith. And this is, uh, I think, so much uh, at the core of the focus that all of us need to look at with respect to our own relationship with the Lord. Um, Simon Peter was one of the fishermen. He and his brother uh, Andrew, uh, they're on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, and, and then their friends, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee there. And the Lord comes along and calls them, calls them into um, uh, being his apostles, calls them first to be his disciples, where they learn from him over this three-year period of our Lord's public ministry, and to accompany him and to witness what he was saying and doing and grasping not only what he was saying and doing because they were there because of the context and witness the context of what he was doing, but also because he took them aside and explained them, uh, things to them in greater detail so that he would make sure that they had understanding and they gained deeper insights. And those deeper insights um, really go into the very heart and soul of the Lord uh, who reveals himself in a deeper kind of way and allows them, as in the case of Peter, James, and John, he takes him into those very important moments um, to be with him, like on the top of Mount Tabor, um, uh, to witness the transfiguration. Um, uh, he he uh, enables them to peer in and to be exposed to uh, what they witness also as our Lord separates himself so many times and goes off uh, to pray and to have that communion with his Father. And they're able to witness and see this, and they're able to gain insights. And because of, I think, it, uh, I think because of their sincerity of faith, of their witnessing him and being responsive to him, uh, and responding to him, that then Saint Peter is able to make this uh, profession of faith. It's it's like the dawning of light that he, the the man that he first met on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Um, uh, that was a more of a superficial kind of encounter, but then over time, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper, and the insight and the understanding grows deeper and deeper and deeper, and that's, that's true for the life of faith. It's very true for the life of faith. And uh, it's something, I think, that continues to grow throughout the entirety of one's life. Um, and there are various ways and times that perhaps we can run into obstacles or uh, blind spots that we have in our, in our life, in our relationship with the Lord, where we just, there's things we maybe can't see or grasp or understand. Maybe there's something in the way, some kind of a plank in our eye we can't see, uh, whatever the case may be. But, but the Lord doesn't give up on us. He continues to maintain His presence. He continues to speak to us. He continues to be present to us in the various events of our lives and to show us over and over and over again 
and reassure us, don't be afraid, I'm with you. Now when he says don't be afraid, it doesn't mean um, don't feel fear. He's saying don't be controlled by fear. Don't be dissuaded from faith. It's precisely in those moments where things are difficult and it's, it's hard to trust and so forth that when we choose to hang in there with him and abide with him and allow him to continue to be with us, that then there's growth because that's the exercising of faith and it builds us up and it creates a greater capacity for the love of the Lord. And, and uh, this relationship is one that involves uh, body, mind, uh, emotions, and the interior life, the soul. Uh, all of these aspects of our being have to be brought to bear in, into this relationship with the Lord. And, and um, uh, as with any other human relationship, you know, the, how do we come to know that we trust somebody? How do we come to know that there's somebody that we can uh, invest in and um, uh, in whom we can let our guard down uh, all of those kinds of things and so what I submit to you today my dear people is um, that all of us myself included is so important that we keep coming back to this and witness the Lord experience the Lord looking at you and me and not only asking us what a who do people say that the Son of Man is? And that's a very valid and important question for us to hear the Lord asking us about today. Because we need to have an understanding of what, what's going on around us and where people are around us. But we can't just run with the herd because the Lord asks us directly, each one of us, who do you say that I am? Uh, and he's not waiting to beat us over the head if we don't have a perfect answer. But our answer needs to be one that kind of helps us to articulate where we are in that, that process of growth in relationship and in faith. And how are we in our interior life? And do we have intimacy with God? You know? The Lord invites us to gain deeper insights into Him and um, the great mystery of His divinity, His Trinitarian life, all that. But also, the Lord uh, is inviting us to open ourselves to Him and to be vulnerable with Him. And to be, and of course, it's that vulnerability that opens us for being able to receive as well as to come to uh, the capacity to uh, manifest a tender love for God, a tender love for God, and to respond to the tender love that God has for each one of us. How each he has for each one of us as individuals, those of you who are married for your spouses, the tender love God has for your children, the tender love God has for your extended family members and your friends and your associates and those strangers out there. Um, I think um, we, of course, it's not at the cost or at the expense of the, the truth of the doctrine of the faith or the moral teachings. It all fits together. It all comes together. And the way that we live an obedient, trusting faith has to come out of a living relationship that has death. And, and you know, I, I, I can't give adequate words of, of how um, uh, blessed I am uh, to be serving as a pastor of this parish with all of you. Uh, you're my family. We're family together. You know, I was telling the deacon before Mass, <laughs> I was joking, you, know, you remember, but two weeks ago, I, I made a joke. I hope everybody recognized I was joking with tongue in cheek. You know, whose child is making all that noise? Well, they're our children. They're, of course, each family, they're your children. God has entrusted them to you. 
But I'm, I feel I love them like my children. And they're our children as a parish family. You know? And it's so beautiful to see how they're growing, how they're maturing, how they express faith, how they uh, sing so beautifully at Mass every Sunday. All of those great things. And, and you know, that's kind of a, a focus on the children. But we are, we are in such a privileged position to model the things to the children so that the light starts going on for them and uh, they're able to enter more deeply into a maturing faith with the Lord, a maturing relationship, and able to see, helping them to see the hand of God in their life through thick and thin. You know, when things are wonderful and beautiful and joyful and, and, and that we see things that are so splendid in the wondrous love of God and His providence, but also when things are difficult and to see that God doesn't abandon us. We may not be seeing uh, uh, the signs of a rescue in a, dif in a difficult moment and all of that, but to help our children to have that trust and faith and know that the Lord is going to uh, accompany us even though we don't perceive Him right in this moment. And, but as we get beyond and, and the storms pass by, we're able to look back and see, oh, here's how the Lord was present. You know, and um, the, uh, Pope Benedict, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, wrote a beautiful reflection entitled, Memory Awakens Hope. And the, the fundamental premise of that reflection was that uh, it's, when we look back, and we have happy memories of beautiful things of love and goodness that God shows to us that that strengthens our faith and, and enables us to be able to get through tough times going in the present or in the future you know? because we have hope and the hope is founded on memory of God's goodness and that manifests itself in family life manifests itself in our walking through uh, this world and, and, and all that goes with that whether we're facing things having to do with our health or other uh, employment, education, friendships, relationships of whatever kind, um, the societal challenges that we're up against and everything. But, but God is steady and steadily with us. And that's so important. And so to help our children to be able to see and recognize that. Um, all of this is really, it's important to teach them the Ten Commandments. It's important to teach them the various doctrines of the faith and everything. But it, all that has to be contextualized in this living relationship. And you know this, but I'm, I'm going to state the obvious. But how often the little ones say things when, when they're realizing things that reminds us that many times... They have a capacity for very, very profound spiritual and theological truths. Out of the mouths of babes come the beautiful proclamations of the praise of God. And that helps us and reminds us and renews us when sometimes we get infected by a sort of cynicism uh, because of the difficult things in this world and in this life. Uh, it's so important that we be renewed by this. And, and this happens by uh, being sustained and receptive and available to this living relationship with the living Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, the one and only Savior of the world. Jesus is not uh, uh, some social revolutionary or social activist. Jesus is not some... Um, potentate in the sense of a political uh, reality with armies uh, and, and worldly power. Jesus is not some kind of a guru that, you know, uh, some new agey kind of figure and so forth. Uh, Jesus is the living God incarnate come to us as our Messiah and our Savior who calls us to uh, deep interpersonal relationship with him and yet not in isolation but in in this mystery 
of his incarnation and then his mystical body, the church, we are brought into something that is greater than ourselves and gives us cause to stand in awe and wonder at the magnitude of who he is and at the same time to be brought to this very, very deep, tender, personal love of relationship. And this is what empowers then our witness to the Lord. This is what empowers us to be able to be able to say before the whole world, He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, and for us to be able to say that and act on that with integrity so that we don't follow uh, corrupt laws and we don't uh, partake of corrupt business practices and, and um, we, that we don't give in to the erosion of decency and civility and of morality uh, in the world around us. We don't just go with the flow. We're not going to run with the herd because all of that is under the dominion of Satan. And Jesus is the Lord of life and the one and only Savior. And it's out of this living relationship then that we can give a credible witness. Frail sinners that we are. Frail sinners that we are. Um, I think one of the one of the most powerful expressions, and it's not a public expression, but it's integral to my life as a priest and, and every priest. It's ministering the sacrament of reconciliation, where uh, people who believe in Jesus Christ go and 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 talk about the very painful things in their lives. The things where there's fear, there's shame. The things where there's woundedness and struggle and difficulty. And they do that. We do that. All of us do that. Um, as an expression of response to Jesus' question. Who do you say that I am? I mean, the world around us rejects this. The idea of going in, in to uh, confess your sins before a priest. But you do it and I do it because it's not that I believe in this or that priest as my savior. I do it because Jesus is present through his priest. And I'm talking to the Lord and I'm asking for his healing and his help. Um, and why do I do that? Because he is the son of the living God. He is the one and only savior of the world. And, you know, I, I, I just want to commend you uh, uh, because, you know, you faithfully celebrate this sacrament. You faithfully attend Mass. You faithfully pray. I know you're praying in your homes as a family. I see the fruit of that, you know. Um, and and as, you, as you're doing that, you are expressing this very fundamental truth. And it's life-changing. It's forming minds and hearts and souls in the life of faith and devotion, but it's also giving witness to the world and showing people that there's a better way. And you're leading others to Jesus Christ in a, in a wondrous, wondrous way. And so for that, you know, we, we turn to the Lord at the altar and give our expression of praise and gratitude and adoration thanksgiving, petition, and uh, contrition for our sins. But we worship not some foreign idol uh, or some uh, celebrity who's having their 15 minutes of fame through cheap tricks, but rather we're worshiping the one true God, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, the Lord.
like Peter, may we recognize Jesus and trust that he will hear the prayers we offer in faith. For the church, that her leaders and members be mindful of serving the world in humility and faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they place the needs and rights of the oppressed before those who are revered in society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, against which the gates of death cannot prevail, will work with confidence to eradicate the injustices of abortion, infanticide, and euthanasia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, may they be blessed with a safe and peaceful transition back to school, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in purgatory, may they find joy and honor as they enter into eternal peace with the righteous, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite love and wisdom, we humbly ask you to hear these prayers. Continue to keep us faithful to the humility of Jesus Christ, so that we may one day rejoice in the resurrection of the righteous. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, 
For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin, Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly confidence and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar 
receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your heart. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Herr Jesu, mein Kommissar, Herr Jesu, Herr Tile und Patri Omnipotenti, in Unitati Spiritus Sancti, Omnis Honor et Gloria, per Omnia Secula Seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Last of them is called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not ready for the future of my life. I'm always saying that.
let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Friends, please remember the reg registration for religious education sacrament preparation classes is now available. New families should contact the parish office for more information. Catechists and aides are needed. We cannot offer formation in the faith and preparation of the sacraments without the help of dedicated volunteers. And I'm always so grateful for the selfless and generous love of those who do volunteer. I know. Um, I, I see the, the dedication and the desire to really transmit the faith to the future generation. And that's so, so important. So, um, uh, we appreciate the volunteers and we want to have a very, very strong religious education and sacrament preparation program for our children and our youth. Uh, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, uh, the RCIA, will begin on Wednesday, September 9th. We invite new inquirers to the Catholic faith and Catholics uh, who seek to complete their sacraments of initiation to join us. I encourage you to contact the office and set up an appointment with me because I personally interview anyone who is uh, uh, seeking to become a Catholic or wanting to uh, uh, complete their initiation. But usually that means people who are adults who were not confirmed as youth. Uh, so uh, please encourage your family or uh, members or friends who may be interested. All classes will be held Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Please contact the parish office for more information. On Wednesday, August 26th, we will have a requiem mass in the extraordinary form. This mass for the dead is offered for the repose of the souls of the deceased. Uh, and so it won't be for an individual, but all who come and participate will be able to offer uh, their participation in that Mass, and I'll have the general attention for all the dead uh, who, um, so that we can remember those who've gone before us. And if you've not been to a Requiem Mass, it's a very, very beautiful and powerful expression of the Church's faith and a petition to Almighty God, uh, transcending the limits of this earth. We've added an additional Mass on Sundays begin beginning August 30th. Father John uh, uh, we will raise it to celebrate the 5.30 p.m. evening Mass. Uh, so beginning August 30th, we will be having the 5.30 p.m. Sunday evening Masses. Appreciate your helping get the word out. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. <laughs>